In this video, I want to show you one of my favorite project management tools, Asana, and how you can use it to create a consistent system for managing your ongoing retainer clients. So what you'll have is a system that you can duplicate and you can use across all of your clients and all of the projects that you have with each one of your clients. This helps you when you're onboarding new clients, so you have a consistent way of teaching them and onboarding them into your systems. It helps you when you're managing multiple projects across the board and uh, just having different project management methods for each client is an absolute nightmare. So this eradicates that because it's consistent across all of them and it helps you bringing new team members on board or contractors. It helps them to get up to speed nice and fast on how you work with each one of your clients because it's the same in all of the projects. All right, so there are five keys when it comes to effectively managing your retainer clients uh, in Asana projects. So the first key is getting everything out of email. Now Asana is amazing at that. That is one of their key features, one of their key value propositions. So you don't want clients to be emailing you and then you've got to respond. They email you a request for a project and it's got multiple tasks and different projects in there and then you've got to give it to your PM who has to structure it in a certain way and communicate that and just it's an absolute nightmare trying to figure out where all the pieces of communication fit. So you want to get it all in a consistent method in one place. Now the second key that backs onto everything out of email is that you want everything to be in this one system. So if a request or a new task or something is outside of the system, you need to feed it back into the system and train your clients how to just use this one system for access to everything. The third key, and this will save you a lot of time, is to use a template. You want to just have a system that's already set up that you can duplicate and you can just rename to the new client so you can get up and running with them much faster than if you were to build this from scratch every time. The fourth key is to have a monthly WIP review. Now WIP, W-I-P stands for work in progress. So we book in a monthly meeting with our clients to just review the month that has been, the work that we've actually done. We have a look at the things that we're waiting on them for and we can catch up and have a discussion and, and get that information from them. We also take a look at what's in progress and then what's planned for the next month. Anything, that, anything that's new that's come in throughout the month, we have a review of that too and then we reprioritize that stuff. So we don't do that sporadically throughout the month. We do that at a scheduled time each month during the monthly WIP review. The fifth thing, the final thing here is batching the feedback. So as I was saying before, clients can send requests, emails, all sorts of things, new projects throughout the month. So what I found that has been super, super helpful is to give them a space in Asana for new projects to come in. So they can park their ideas, their strategies, their things they wanna run through with us at the monthly WIP review. They park it there and then we can decide to assess it throughout the month or we can just look at it at the monthly WIP review. So we're batching when we're processing these new things that have come in and they're not interrupting our day to day. All right, so what we're looking at here is the template. Now this is what I start with and I duplicate this for my clients. I've added in a couple of extra stuff just so you can see what it looks like to have a project completed. So I'm just gonna walk you through from top to bottom. So I put in a heading here called new. Now in this new heading is where clients can park new ideas or new projects that they've got going on. They're just welcome to add in a new line here, uh, next new idea, and they could just put things at the top so we always know that that's new. A lot of the clients that I work with, uh, sometimes they'll actually put it right at the top here. That's totally fine, just as long as it's within the top section is totally fine for us to bulk process those later. Next up, I've got a section for reference things. So we put in the goals for 2019, uh, the roadmap that we've got. So we usually do 12 month plans uh, with our clients as well. So we put those details in there. We have a note uh, for our clients as well uh, to start here. So a little bit of a welcome text and then we like to do a little video. We just use Loom for this as well. Just record your screen and let them know how to use this project Keep it nice and short, under two minutes. Uh, just let them know how to add new tasks and how you'll be using this project moving forward. We've also got a little section for ongoing. So if you do something like Facebook ad management or social media services, you just list those services in there. Something that you might do on a recurring basis just can just go into that section. Anything that's waiting for someone to respond to you about or it's in review goes into this waiting slash review section. You can see we've just got a project listed in there as well. Anything that's in progress goes into the in progress section. So if we've had the response that we've needed from this particular project and we're ready to go again and this is in progress, we'll move it into that in progress section. Now it's nice and easy for the client to see at a glance what we're actually working on right now. So coming down here, we've got the current sprint or current month or whatever you wanna call that. 
uh, and we've got May here and all the different projects that we're going to accomplish within this month or this sprint. You can see that I've marked one as completed. Um, as they get completed, so let's say we've completed project number two, I then actually move that down into the current list because what happens is at the end of the month, we change this to done and then we move all of the tasks and projects down into the bottom section here. Now we can see all the different things that we've done over time in a list. Right, so we've got done in May, April, March, Feb. So the client can always see nice and easily uh, what different deliverables that we've achieved uh, over the course of working together. Coming down a little bit further, we've got next up. So we found that by having projects, or we have a lot of projects on at one time or in the queue with our clients. And next up are like the, the next most important things we're gonna work on. After that, we've got backlog. So these are the projects we wanna work on at some point. Uh, they're not exactly priority right now. They're not as important as next up, but we definitely wanna work on them and they're ready to go. And then last of all, we've got ideas, future plans. So these are the things we've just got parked. We, want, we may want them by the end of the year, we may want them in six months, but these are things we're not actively working on right now, but we still wanna pay attention to them and we still wanna have them in one place. And then of course, down the bottom, we have the done list, as I mentioned before. So this is the way that we manage our retainer clients. So it's really easy for everyone who's on the project to see everything at a glance and everything in one place. All right, so the next step for you is to sign up for Asana and then build out this template. Just create it as its own project, call it a template for retainer clients, and then actually start using this with one of your clients. The goal is to make your life easier and to make your client's life easier and to make this consistent across uh, all of your projects and clients. So I'd love to see how you implement this. If you have any struggles at all, please let me know what your challenges are and also any changes that you've made to this to make it a little bit better. I'd love to know some feedback to make things a bit more efficient. Oh,